Penn State Brazil reactor is the uh, longest continuously operating reactor in the United States. It was established 1955, right after President Eisenhower's Atom for Peace project, which is he initiated 1953. Since the reactor began, it really has been a training and resource for education uh, for nuclear scientists and, and non-nuclear scientists. Uh, in 1956, Penn State was one of two international schools to teach about nuclear science and engineering applications. If we are looking at uh, the new trend in education of uh, increasing the hands-on experience of students, get them involved in actual experiments, get them seeing the details of how the technology interfaces with the applications, then there is really no uh, alternative to having an actual physical uh, uh, capability as we have at Penn State in terms of the nuclear reactor. There's very few um, universities that have an operating reactor and I get to sit 20 feet from it every day and perform experiments on it whenever I want. The mission of the Radiation Science and Engineering Center to, is to operate the main Brazil reactor, all our radiation facilities, safely and securely to help research and education. Currently we operate the facility about 50 hours a week. I've got 16 licensed student and staff operators and we operate about 600 megawatt hours each year. Another benefit of being an intern at the reactor is that it creates a culture for us to be safe, uh, for us to be efficient, to be trained and to be honest. Um, we're allowed to make mistakes as students and we learn from them. That helps us grow into young professionals. Safety is always a primary concern when you're running a facility like this and we all take it very seriously so it's important that we do things right and it's important to me that the NRC does stay on top of these things. It gives me confidence that our reactors across the country are actually being operated safely. Several students who have come through uh, to the Penn State Nuclear Engineering Program because of their field trips or the teachers that they had took one of our teacher workshops that they found an interest in nuclear engineering and have pursued it. I got interested in nuclear engineering while taking a chemistry course at Penn State and they gave a tour at Brazil Nuclear Reactor. We educate about 3,000 people a year from elementary age students up through high school and college. And then we also do professional development workshops for, um, for nuclear professionals and energy professionals. Penn State conducted this nuclear concepts program from the late 1960s to the early 90s. The program grew uh, from just Pennsylvania teachers who then formed what's called the Pennsylvania Nuclear Science Teachers Association to expand it to the nation, the American Nuclear Science Teachers Association. When I was a high school junior, I took physics and my physics teacher had been trained in some of the nuclear education programs that uh, Candace Davidson runs here at the reactor and we took a field trip here to see the Penn State Brazil reactor. And Penn State is broad in terms of its educational base. We have a lot of experts that touch upon almost all areas, but uh, particularly strong in, in, in uh, basic sciences, physics and engineering disciplines, and, uh, and so it's fitting that we have a reactor here on campus. We have two new initiatives in terms of the education. One is the nuclear security education laboratory. The other one is the radiochemistry uh, teaching and research laboratory. Radiation is everywhere in our lives, right? There's lots of naturally occurring radioactivity and it's involved in a lot of natural processes. Having the reactor is actually a really great thing for some of the radiochemistry classes we have here. We can um, bring students in to show them reactor, right? So they can see a working reactor you know, in person. The other thing is that for our radiochemistry class, we can actually make a number of the isotopes that the students would use in class. So one of our recent projects was the creation of some copper 64 and copper 67 isotopes. They are medical isotopes that are in high demand for research but in um, short supply. And we were able to produce those via um, a different route than normal but in our reactor. Radiation Science and Engineering Center is a home of the Nuclear Security Education Program and we created state-of-the-art nuclear security education lab. This uh, nuclear security education program actually jointly developed with MIT and Texas A&M and was supported by Department of Energy National Nuclear Security Administration. Nuclear security is one of the critical area and especially uh, uh, after 9-11. Currently, the reactor is working with about 15 different government and industry agencies to provide services that support the nation. Recently, we radiographed a portion 
of the spacesuit life support pack that astronauts wear when they leave the space station. It was fascinating for both us, the staff, and the students. Some of the research that I'm involved with in the gamma radiation includes helping the honeybee from colony collapse disorder. We sterilize the pollen that uh, they're using for that. We've also shown that we can reduce pesticide levels with the gamma rays. And we're also doing some interesting cosmochemistry research with NASA. So we are one of these unique institutions that are able to provide the undergraduate students with a real life experience in nuclear engineering. This is really quite rare. Everyone at the reactor is a giant family and um, it's very easy to accomplish research when everyone's working as well together as they are here. 